Good morning, everyone. Uh, today's uh, reading is titled, A Godly Mother. Uh, it's out of Proverbs 31, verses 25 through 28. Strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in the time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. Thus concludes today's reading. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to eCourse Community Bible Church, and today our subject is going to be godly mothers. There's a big difference between godly mothers and ungodly mothers, isn't there? Amen. Amen. And as we sit in our chairs, we have a whole lot of different uh, individuals who have gone through different experiences. Some of us have had some wonderful mothers. Some of us have had some mothers that tried. And they tried their best. Thank God they tried, right? It's not easy in this life, is it? And then we've got some other mothers that just uh, gave up. But you know, even the mothers who have given up uh, are our mothers. And we pray for them, don't we? So today is uh, uh, Mother's Day, but we're going to be looking at the scriptures today about uh, godly mothers. And the purpose for that is so that we can understand the roles that uh, we have been given of God, ordained of God, and I'm speaking to the ladies, and then men, you get your turn next month, all right? Jeff's being kind of like a mom and a dad, and thank you, Jeff. <laughs> all in one. <laughs> thank you, Jeff. Um, so this is, a, this is so important. I want to also add this before we get into the message today, and that is, is that we've had ladies in our church who have, didn't have children. Uh, they were not blessed with children, but boy did they have children, and I mean spiritual children, because our church has through the years, 43 years, this May 24th, been filled with hundreds of children and we've had some uh, spiritual mothers in fact the moms that do have children maybe they're grown up and you have also been the spiritual mothers uh, to uh, guide these dear ones that have come through the doors of this church throughout the years so with that said I want us to bow our heads and our hearts before our Heavenly Father and ask his blessing on the word as it goes forward let us pray gracious Father we thank you for the privilege we have to be here today this is the day that the Lord has made we will rejoice and be glad in it this is the Lord's day this is your day Heavenly Father help our hearts to be right we come in your presence forgive us of our sins of our shortcomings. We come now, we ask you, Holy Spirit, to speak, to inspire through your word to our hearts so that if there's any here that don't know you as Lord and Savior, convict their hearts concerning their need for you. And for the rest of us, gracious Father, we pray, um, convict our hearts to live for you. We love you. And we are so grateful for our mothers, and we ask a special blessing on them and the mothers of the Bible and those that are listening in. Father, we thank you and praise you and ask your blessing. This day in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, thank you, Frank, for reading that uh, uh, passage from uh, Proverbs about a godly mother. Um, and let's all think about this. Uh, uh, particularly, obviously, I'm speaking to the ladies. Did you have a godly mother? Okay, what a difference for those that have had a godly mother. I speak from personal experience. There are a few of you that remember my mother. 
uh, my mother, she was with us almost from the beginning. Uh, first she went to the Grace Cumberland Presbyterian Church. Actually, we went to Warrendale. My mother went to Warrendale. And before that, my father was a pastor, but he died when I was a teenager. He was a good father, very good father. And I had a very good, godly mother. And guess what? Every week, what? Boy, we're there at church. It wasn't like, well, do you want to go to church today? Or, Mom, I'm tired, you know. Excuse me today. What, young man? Yeah. Get those pants on. Yeah. You know, there wasn't any question of whether we were going to church. She trained us, and my dad as well. But, I mean, I don't know. There's something about the mother's involvement with the children uh, that um, have probably the most lasting effect in our lives. Um, so, uh, I thank God for a godly mother, Gladys Brown, Gladys Nightingale Brown, and then she remarried, and after my father died, uh, Dyra. She's in our Hall of Faith. We've got a Hall of Faith up there. And uh, I'm going to mention some of the ladies that have been godly mothers in our church, and they have been the mothers not only to their own children, but they've been the mothers to the children here at this church. That some who are growing and have reached their 30s, maybe their 40s, they remember back to these ladies. Starting with my mother, and then we had uh, Aunt March. Sounds like a, 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 a godly mother, doesn't it? Aunt March. If you remember her, boy, she was there, and she was there all the time. Pastor Ballou knows that the ladies that we had in our church, they're the ones, I'm not going to say that ran the church, I'm going to say they're the ones that uh, were probably uh, became uh, the pillars in the church that helped uh, keep the church moving forward. Godly ladies. And then we had, uh, if we want to uh, mention a couple more, we had our dear... Um, uh, some of our ladies, we had our dear Carol Falouf, who uh, was right from the outset, and we're talking about uh, into four decades before the Lord took her home, to, uh, and, and most of us know Carol Falouf, was that she was so godly. She loved those children. The children loved her. I mean, to the camps. We, we always had camps. We had summer camp, we had winter camp, we had uh, uh, going out to the wave pool, we had going out to boating, we had barbecues, we had uh, Cedar Point, we had uh, baseball. We always had baseball, softball. You remember the softball? Uh, I'm looking at Shaquille. He was just this little tyke when he first started coming. You know, so, mu so much involvement, but our ladies were there and everything, and I'm talking about uh, Pastor Lou's life. Teaching the Sunday school, the junior church. Oh my goodness. That's why her funeral was so easy to do. It was so hard to go through, but it was so easy to... I mean, my goodness. Godly mother. Not only to her own children, but also to those that uh, were at this church. I'm talking about hundreds, friends. Hundreds. Doris Irving was there, and she was the uh, assistant wasn't Shirley Zerwinski was there. Their pictures are up in our hall of faith for this church. Okay. Jan Garland. Yeah, yeah, she was there quite a bit. We love Jan. Uh, and she's gone before us. We've got a lot of other ladies that were involved. They're still alive. I won't mention their names. But I'm speaking of those who since have passed and uh, I'm sure that there are others, and I can't remember all their names, but some of them stand out. And I think uh, that in light of Mother's Day today, that uh, they were the soldiers. Well, the men that were here too were also, but today's Mother's Day, and we're remembering them. Oh, how we missed them. Boy, if we had those ladies today, we'd probably have, uh, we used to, Pastor Blue used to work with 70 kids in this church. Okay? And uh, all those ladies were busy all the time. And they loved it. And they gave and they sacrificed. All right? 
So I wanted to say that, and uh, listen, mothers have been given a great responsibility before our Lord. Do you know that? You have been given a great responsibility before the Lord. And we're going to uh, start with this point, point number one, childbearing. As much as a man might uh, desire to produce a child, uh, they, they don't have a chance. And guess what? The men don't want to. Amen. <laughs> and most men. And we're so grateful for uh, the ladies, the wives that uh, they went through, what, nine months of childbearing and bearing us and, 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 and choosing for us to be delivered. Thank, thank you, Mom. Thank you, Mom. Thank you, mothers. Now, let me also say this for those that are listening in, and maybe you've had uh, abortion or abortions, because that was counseling. Uh, with different uh, ladies throughout the years in our church that had confessed that they'd had abortions and how grieved they were that as they became Christians that they realized that uh, that was a, a very sinful thing to do was to bring execution to their child. But the fact of the matter is that as a cri Christian, God forgives. God forgives. You can stand up, you can ask for forgiveness before God, listen, and He will forgive you, but we'll never make that mistake again. And we'll encourage other uh, ladies uh, not to take their child's life. And thank God for those mothers, listen, that we all have uh, our existence today and to serve the Lord. Thank you, Mom. So childbearing is uh, something that God has blessed uh, ladies with, and how grateful are you to your mothers who chose life and love for you? I'm grateful to <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Despite the feminist movement, the politically correct policies, the pro-abortionists, and the radical left, there are dramatic emotional and biological differences between males and females. Don't let anybody tell you any different. I don't think anyone can tell you. We're different, aren't we? Men are men and uh, women are women and boys are boys and girls are girls. That's it. That's how God made us. And never in between. Today, the worldly influences, including the one world government, which has been there for some time, go back to the Illuminati, back centuries. And this has just been uh, a hand of Satan, friends. As we study the scriptures, are you reading the Bible? And the influences that Satan has in the world as he has been working to form a one world government in order that he can control the world so that his immorality becomes the standard, his law. And that death becomes the standard and good. We're talking about little little children in the mother's womb. It doesn't matter how many times uh, a political figure or a king or a queen might say that it's right, it's wrong. It's what God says. We're going to go, go through this a little bit more. But they're pushing the agenda to force a gender-neutral society to claim that there's no difference between men and women, boys and girls. You're in this church. I shouldn't have to tell you unless you're a guest and you're, you know, I mean, this church we understand, don't we? We've got the light on in this church. The scriptures bear the truth. Amen. The scriptures. Are you listening? Therefore, men can, today, in this world, men can marry men and women can marry women and a man can become a woman. A woman can become a man even without an operation just by declaring it. They're getting in trouble, aren't they, in, uh, in the uh, Olympics? Yeah. We've got some men who says, well, I'm, I'm a woman, in order that they can uh, enter the women's swimming contest. And uh, we've seen that they just are breaking records. And uh, what a shame. They're not women, friends. Somebody says, 
Can't you get in trouble for saying that, Pastor? Listen, this is the Word of God. Amen. This is what God says. This is what, what am I? I'm a vessel. Uh, I'm not trying to be popular. Uh, I know what I have to do, and that's it. I can't bend or I, I, I can't be uh, shaped uh, by the powers that be. We are children of God and we stand for the Word of God, period, regardless of the cost. Amen. And we always have, and by God's grace we always will. These are clearly lies against the, the, uh, the, against science, friends, and against truth. What does the Bible say? You know the Bible's God's voice? Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall stand forever. Thy words were found, I did eat them, and they were unto me the joy and rejoicing of my soul. And so we stand on the Word of God. Genesis 2.21. Genesis 2.21. Some of you have those papers and writing down uh, verses. Yeah, by the way, uh, it's probably we want to turn our phones off. All right. Genesis 2.21. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man. This is the beginning of creation. This is important. We go back to the Bible to know these are not just made up stories to teach us lessons. These aren't parables. This actually happened, friends. The Word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit of the joints and the marrow. It, the Word of God, is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And so the Bible says, also, 2 Timothy 3.16, the Word of God is inspired, God breathed, theops pneuma. It's God's word to man. And that's why we say, so the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and while he slept, he took one of his ribs. Boy, that sounds like a, a story or a, something made up. No, God can, can do what he wants. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Nothing. If he created the heavens and the earth, he could take a rib from a man. He put him to sleep. We will see Adam, I believe, in heaven. We will see Eve, I believe, in heaven. How do you know? Because they fell, but they believed. Afterwards, God made provision for them, and his son, their son Abel was making the proper sacrifice. An animal sacrifice was received. Who taught his son? Adam and Eve did. We'll see them in heaven. So God took one of the ribs of the man. He closed it in his, with flesh. And the rib that the Lord had taken from the man, he made it into a woman brought her to the man. Now, I want you to think about this briefly. This made her part of man. I mean, the, the man and the woman, they are one flesh, friends. And this is in the marriage union. They become one. And so that's why there is that uh, taking out of the rib, making the woman. And so this is what he did. And so he had taken her from the man. He made her into a woman and brought her to the man. In verse 23 of Genesis 2. Then the man said this. First of all, the man said, wow. It doesn't say that, but you know that. <laughs> wow. Woman. Woman, woman. It doesn't say that, but uh, well, even if he didn't say it, he was thinking it. <coughs> then, then, the man, then the man said, "This at last is bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. She should be called woman, because she's taken out of the man." So we see clearly the distinction between the sexes, male and female. And aren't you glad, man? There's a distinction that there, that there are women, please. And, and, and women that there are men. Next we see the particular design for function. Each of us has a role, friends. Who determines what our role is? The government? Listen, we have a one world government that has been conspiring and we also know that... Uh, the powers that be in the world today have gotten pretty far 
And it uh, won't be long that they'll be looking for a leader over the one world government, but it'll be after the rapture. Amen. Are you saved? There's going to be a rapture, and it's only for true believers. Amen. Okay, some of us think we're saved because we maybe uh, signed a pledge, or we were baptized, or we prayed a little prayer. Has your life changed? Has it been transformed in your heart? Do you desire the Word of God? This is the church where the light's on. Do you want to be in church to hear the Word of God? Well, those are some evidences. So it says, Genesis 3.16, to the woman, he said, I will surely multiply your pain and childbearing. This is after they fell. And in pain you shall bring forth children. How many mothers, don't raise your hand, have knows that there's some pain that when you deliver that child. Thank you, Ma, for uh, allowing me, choosing me. And of course, your desire shall be to your husband, and listen, he shall rule over you. What? <laughs> what? But he has to answer to God. So he better make the right decisions, friend. You better marry a Christian if you're a uh, 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 a, uh, uh, a, a Christian uh, lady. How important is that? Somebody, I talked with them recently, and they were saying, well, you know, uh, this, this, this gentleman, boy, he likes me. And uh, we've had a child together. And I'm a Christian now. And I love the Lord. But he belongs to another religion. Okay? The Bible says, be not unequally yoked. So we dare not Submit to someone who is not a Christian, true Christian. Does not by not by name, but by a changed and transformed life. All right. Otherwise, we're going to be in a whole bit of trouble. And for those that are married to unbelievers, uh, read First Corinthians chapter seven. You don't leave them, but if they leave you because of your faith, you're not under bondage. You're not chained. But if you're Christians, you don't leave one another, friend. You work things out. If there's abuse, see, I'm doing a little marriage counseling. If there's abuse, yeah, leave them immediately, but don't divorce them. Give God time to work in his life or her life. However long, friends. Your desire shall be to your husband, he shall rule over you. And, and again, we have bosses that rule over us. We submit. Boy, I called myself a, a, a male, um, a, while I was a mailman for 20, almost 20 years, uh, you know, uh, a slave of the post office. That's how I felt. Uh, UPS, come on. Underpaid slaves. Yeah, underpaid slaves. But it's okay. I did my best. Listen, I understand somebody had authority. I called them boss. Okay? And that's what the Bible says. Okay, and uh, the man's instruction from God is clear in the following verses, verses, uh, uh, verses 17 through 19, Genesis 3. Now listen, man is to labor to produce a food from the ground. So it's the man's responsibility to go out and provide for the family. There are times that a, uh, a wife or a mother has to work, obviously, especially if she doesn't have a husband. But even in the circumstances... But the role of the man is to go to work. In fact, First Thessalonians, and, uh, is it uh, three ten, that says either three ten or four, yeah, three Second Thessalonians three ten said, if a man doesn't work, he shouldn't eat. Okay, all oh, that's ruffling some feathers. It's important that we God has built us to work. Verse nineteen says, by the sweat of your face you shall eat bread. Till you return to the ground, and that's the man's role. That's your role. Okay, you're not gonna learn that uh, from the world, are you? Nope. Not anymore. It hasn't changed. That's it. Four thousand years later, Jesus declares this to be the truth. After uh, Genesis was uh, happening, and in Matthew 19:4, Jesus answered, "Have you not heard that from the beginning, God?" made you male and female. So 4,000 years after God had made man and woman, Jesus said, that's how it is. 
2,000 years later, we can agree with God the Father and Jesus. That's how it is. And so the rapture is going to happen and then all the world is going to rejoice that the Christians are gone. Okay? Oh, they're going to rejoice. And then Satan's going to take over. Just read Revelation chapter 6, 11, and 13. Now write those down in your mind. So Paul the Apostle also makes this distinction between men and women. In 1 Timothy 2.9, likewise also that the woman, 1 Timothy 2.9, also, the women should adorn themselves in respectable apparel, apparel with modesty and self-control. What? Modesty? Dressing, you know, like in church when you come, modestly. Not revealing things and getting men's attention, but to honor God before the angels. A holy, modest, chaste woman. And you know who are supposed to be the role models? The elder women. Was Carol that way? Yes, she was. Was my mom that way? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so that's our role. The older women are to be the role models to the younger women. It says, with what is proper for women who profess godliness with good works. Let a woman quietly with all submissiveness. And God is honored. Do we want to honor God? You know, some, some of us, I don't know what it is. This is the hair standing up on the back of some of our neck. Listen, let's submit to God. Men, you get your turn next month on Father's Day. Uh, women, you think you've got a heart. You watch. I do not permit a woman to teach or exercise authority over the man. Rather, she is to remain quiet in the church. We've had a study. We put it in our bulletins. We've gone over it is that uh, God has not ordained uh, uh, women as pastors. Are you listening? Uh, oh, there goes the hair on the back of the neck. Of uh, some. You know, listen, can't we listen to the, to, to the Lord? He said, yeah, but I know this church and that church. Listen, you don't have to answer for that church. I don't have to answer for that church. That pastor, those people, boy, they've got to answer. I have to answer for this church. And what did I say? I'm not trying to impress anybody. We're not trying to get bodies in the seats. We're trying to get souls saved into heaven. That's it. Amen. You know, you read the advertisements uh, so often, it says, guaranteed we will, uh, if you follow this plan, we'll will get 400 people in your church by the end of the year. I have to keep saying, what? Boy, you've got a better plan than uh, the scriptures, than the Bible. Do you know that the early church, the churches, uh, uh, Thessalonica, Ephesus, uh, Thyatira, on and on and on, their average churches were under 100. How do we know that? It's because they were meeting in homes. What home can fit more than 100 people? And so, today in America, the average church is uh, uh, around uh, under 75. Okay, so we're not, listen, these people who have got these big churches and everything, the entertainment, is that what we want to do is entertain or do we want the Holy Spirit's word? to be received and preached. And so God will bless those who honor Him. Um, so, likewise, that women should adorn themselves in respectable apparel with modesty and self-control with what is proper for women who profess godliness with good works, let a woman quietly with all submissiveness. I do not permit a woman to teach or exercise authority over the man, rather that she remain quiet in the church. Alright, I want to speed things up here and get ready to close, so I'm going to move along quickly. In verse 13, for Adam was first formed, and then Eve. Now this truth has nothing to do with any changes in time or culture, but what changeless truths that God declared. It's not, oh, society has changed. Uh, you know, the role of the women have changed. The role of the men have changed. 
Now for most men, particularly Pastor Malou or Pastor uh, Jim was here, uh, would remember, and certainly some of the gentlemen that are up there, and you know, some of us, is we remember that role of women in the church. We remember the role of men in the church. We remember what was happening in those early years of our lives, let alone going back a, a hundred years and further. And so, in the beginning of creation, it remains the same truth in our day. God doesn't change. Verse 14, And Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived, and man became a transgressor. The woman wasn't held responsible. We're not born in sin because of the woman, although there's a, yeah, there was some guilt on her, but the responsibility fell on the man because he did not protect his woman, his wife, from this. You say, that, that would have been hard. Yeah, but that's the role, man, is to protect your wife. She was deceived. He was not. How do you know he wasn't deceived? The Bible says so, but he could see the glory of the Lord and departed from his wife, and so he had a choice to make. He sacrificed himself to go with her. And therefore God made redemption for her. He didn't make, re and, and for him and her, Adam and Eve, but he didn't make redemption for uh, the fallen angels because they fell out of, fry, uh, out of pride. But he did for the man because he fell out of love. Sacrifice. Yet she will be saved from a lower level of worth and citizenship through childbearing. Boy, the woman, listen, godly women who bear those children, listen. You are lifted before the Lord in honor, you have such a role. The man's heart is broken. If, 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 if you wondered about the fact he has to rule over the woman, his heart is broken and she becomes the queen because of childhood. God gave this gift to women. It was his, his role, it, his, his purpose in, in the role of the woman. And a mother or a woman, and only a woman, a mother has cher the cherished role of bringing up the newborn child into this world. No man can ever achieve this to himself. This wonder of procreation. His part, of course, is in the love relationship that only takes place within a marriage, friends, within a marriage. Okay, so what I want to do is uh, get ready to close. I want to give you point three. A godly mother will help bring up their children. You know, somebody called me uh, recently and said, you know, my mother is uh, dying and uh, uh, we need uh, a pastor. Well, I was sick and I ended up going to the hospital and I couldn't go there. She died. But in the process, the person on the phone said this, these words, while this was, while she was sick. He said that, uh, well, maybe I'll bring my kids to church. And the kids, oh, I guess they're teenagers now. And he says, oh, but they're, they're wild. You know, maybe they won't come. Maybe they will. Now listen, a godly mother is not going to uh, allow children to become like the world. The souls of these teenagers now are laid in the balance is because they didn't train those children the way a godly mother is supposed to. Train up a child in the way they shall go and when they are old they'll not depart. Get them into church at an early age. A Bible church. Godly mother will bring up their children in the ways of the Lord. And our example in the Bible is Timothy who was raised by his mother and grandmother, Lois. Okay. We've got those three things, ladies. And let me close by saying this. The Bible tells us, train up a child in the way that they should go. When they're old, they'll not depart. Where does it say that, Proverbs 22 says? Are you training up your child in the ways of the Lord? Thank you, Jeff. Bringing them to church. Boy, bringing them to the fellowship. Sometimes he asks, you know, uh, 
men's meeting or ladies' meeting. Deb, are you going to be there? Because uh, she kind of helps out with the kids. And, and uh, he wants his kids in church. Amen. And he knows. And, and, and this is Mother's Day, but that's what I say to keep the dad and the mom. Our dear ladies that are here, those listening in, and whatever age that you are, how great of a responsibility you have been given by God. You will answer for your children. You will answer what you planted in their heart. Taking the leadership role by being the role model first. And secondly, by uh, little studies at home, bringing them to church, making sure they only have the best friends, Christian friends, by the way. The lives of eternal souls begin by your choices. To have or not to have. You make the choices what they can have. You make the choices what they cannot have. You better make those choices to protect or not to protect. To protect them from the influence of this world or not to protect them. To raise in the Lord or to neglect that responsibility. To raise them in the Lord. Thank you, Mom. Or not to. To instill within your little one good moral character, including by not confusing your children about God-given roles. A boy is a boy, a girl is a girl. That's your responsibility. A man is a man, a woman is a woman. And there's never any difference between. Never. That's your role, is to not confuse your children or allow them to be confused of the God-given roles and modeling and living godly life, a person's behavior and character is formed by the influence, example, and lifestyles of others, beginning with their mother and their father. So, here is what Frank read. Proverbs 31, 25 to 28. This is a, 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 a godly woman. Now listen, strength and honor are her clothing. We're not talking about physical clothes. We're talking about when somebody sees her coming, they see her strength in God, her stand. They see the honor of God, and she shall rejoice in the time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom. In her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. Boy, she's busy. Boy, isn't that a godly mom? Boy, right in the morning, <laughs> getting those kids up, getting them ready for school. Praying with them in the morning. And throughout the day, thinking about her family. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also. He praises her. That's a godly mother. Thank God for the godly mothers and let us learn and let us also seek to apply ourselves not to be first involved in the sins of this world. Shaking your fist at God and not living up to the godly call and roll from the scriptures that God has called you to. And thank God for those who say, yes, I will repent of my lifestyle if it's in rebellion against God and embrace Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and then live my life with the responsibility God has given to me. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you for the privilege today of learning about godly mothers. Godly mothers. Not ungodly mothers, but godly mothers. Thank you for the godly mothers 
They come to this church and are willing to submit to your word and your will. Doesn't matter what happens in other churches, they have to answer before you. They can bend the rules. They can change things. But they will have to answer to God. We have to answer to God. Mm -hmm. Lord, thank you for our godly mothers. and Help us to so bend our thinking and make the right choices so that we honor you. And we ask a special blessing on all those uh, mothers today that are here and listening in that have made commitments to you, Lord, to live godly lives and to raise godly families. We ask your blessings upon them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.